Aristotle described the imagination as a place of construction that fed rich ideas to the faculty of reason. As an architect, the analogy of imagination as a construction site is quite appealing. Aristotle's beautiful map of consciousness had the unique feature of placing imagination at the forefront of how impressions of the world were processed and built. Unfortunately today, an active imagination is often seen, seen as secondary to productive reason. Today at this Carleton University convocation ceremony, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing two remarkable people for whom the magical art of making visible that which is invisible is common practice, or more precisely, who have mastered Aristotle's art of imagining and building a better future. Who can look at an empty field, envision a new city while protecting the natural environment, and then build multiple educational, community, and recreational facilities, multi-generational housing, choices which allow people to remain in their communities, and diverse job opportunities where people can work near where they live, all within their own lifetime? Who can see the future needs of a community such as enhanced health facilities, educational environments, and arts programs, and then work really hard to make them real? Bill and Jean Tarron clearly demonstrate this unique ability, combining creative imagination, knowledge of how to get things done, keen awareness of the needs of their community, heartfelt concern for the future, and an astute understanding of economics. Upon graduating from Carleton in 1956 with her BA in psychology, Jean Tehran has helped build many community programs through her work with the United Way, with the Carleton Alumni Association, the Trillium Foundation, Ashbury College, the Ottawa Hospital, the National Arts Centre, the Ottawa Chamber Music Society, and the Israeli School of Architecture and Urbanism, as well as the School of Industrial Design, which uh, are all aimed at improving the world we live in. Jean served as a chair of the board here at Carleton University from 1983 to 1985, and also later was a chair of the board at Ashbury College. I would like to add that she was often the first female member of many of these organizations as well. Since the 1950s, Bill Tarron has led many visionary projects through his work in public policy and, and at design at all scales. Known as the father of Canada, for his design and development of our Greenbelt City, Bill Tehran has continued to use his imagineering skills to challenge cities, communities, and students to rethink what is normal. He served as secretary in the Ministry of State for Urban Affairs, as well as the chairman of the board and president of the Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation in the 70s, working on several innovative ideas in these organizations. He was made Officer of the Order of Canada in 1983 for his outstanding work and has won several other national awards for community design and innovation. Bill is also an honorary a member of the Ontario Association of Architects and of the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada. He has continued to build much of our urban environment in Ottawa through the Terron Family Design and Development Companies and is also an active member of several national arts and urban design organizations. Together, Bill and Jean have created wonderful scholarship programs for students in both the Israeli School of Architecture and Urbanism and the School of Industrial Design here at Carleton. And there are many Tehran scholars in the audience today. There are, they are exemplary builders of our architectural, educational, health, and cultural environments here in Ottawa and across Canada. Mr. Chancellor, in recognition of outstanding contribution to business and commitment to philanthropic endeavors and the community, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa upon Bill Tehran and upon Jean Tehran. By virtue of my authority, I confer upon you, Bill and Jean, the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Chancellor Charles Chi, President Roseanne Renta, members of the Senate, Board of Governors Chairman Ron Jackson, members of the board, 
distinguished faculty, honored graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Professor Boyle. Bill and I are deeply touched by your kind words and generous welcome. We feel quite humbled that Carleton chose to recognize us in this manner. Let me express our appreciation to the Senate for conferring this distinguished honor on us both. What a delight that this is a joint ceremony, because our lives together started in my frosh week in 1953. We met when Bill was asked to come to campus to join the band to cheer on the football ravens. I could never, never have imagined 60 years ago as I entered Carleton that such a day as this could ever happen. Indeed, I am a very proud graduate of Carleton. We are both passionate supporters. My optimism for you graduates, for the future of Canada and for Canadians is high. Canada has achieved an enviable position in the world regarding equality and opportunity. Today's gender and racial composition of you graduates, the composition of our provincial premiers, of our Supreme Court, our own exemplary Roseanne Runty with her enlightened leadership, and the ever-increasing leadership in all aspects of local national and global enterprise are examples of how we have embraced equality and equal rights in our country. An essential ingredient in your success will be your personal attitude. Writer Eckhart Tool describes three levels of human enlightenment, acceptance, happiness, and enthusiasm. Acceptance when you're Life and work is just a necessary task. Happiness comes when you are very comfortable with your life and work. Then enthusiasm, when you have a mission and a goal, then the impossible becomes possible. Then achievement is without boundaries. Don't be afraid to dream, because without dreams or visions, life would be empty of accomplishments. Sharing your talents and skills with the community, local or worldwide, can provide some of the most meaningful experiences of your life. Your university has been exemplary in this. Carleton was founded in 1942 by volunteers, by community-minded citizens who wanted to establish a place of higher learning for those whose careers were interrupted by war. Carleton's strategic plan emphasizes how Carleton was built in the community, by the community, and for the community. And this community is now engaged in solving real world problems. Time has taught me that whatever time and effort you put into any volunteer effort is more than rewarded with the knowledge that you have made a difference. It has been truly inspiring to observe how at Carleton, very busy students have stretched themselves to organize both locally and internationally very successful campaigns or events such as the Relay of Life supporting cancer survivors. So often I reflect on Charles Darwin's over 200-year-old quote, which I think is even more appropriate today. It is not the strongest of the series that survives, nor is it the most intelligent. It is the one most adaptable to change that survives. Your university has excelled by adapting to changing circumstances, and so will you. I wish to congratulate you all on your substantial accomplishments to date, and wish every one of you success and a purposeful life. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I wish to reiterate Jean's comments of how overwhelmed and delighted we are to receive an honorary degree from our beloved 
Carleton University. With regards to today's convocation degrees, I wish to pay respect to the strong leadership at Carleton University provided by Chancellor Charles Chi, by President Roseanne Runty, by the members of the Senate, the Board of Governors and its Chair Ron Jackson, and of course to Carleton's distinguished faculty. And I want to compliment them for giving high priority to creativity, entrepreneurship, and sustainability. I wish to congratulate each and every one of you for graduating today with a well-earned degree in fields that exemplify creativity and innovation. Well done. Jean and I are very proud to belong to this graduating class of 2013. We will remember that date for life. My remarks today are directed at the future, your future, because today is your special day. Jean's remarks about my early musical life reminded me of the relationship between music and creativity. When people mention that they enjoy music, I think of the added joy of actually making music. In the same way that people admire creativity, I know that every graduate in this room is fortunate enough to be able to produce creativity, whether in architecture, industrial design, or in creative business planning. Creativity and innovation are essential to help expand efficiency and productivity, which has a direct bearing on the quality of life. Creativity is a joyful profession. Working in this field, I have found that every day was Sunday. At 80 years of age, in addition to a happy personal life, I have enjoyed 60 years of joyful design and entrepreneurial work. My only regret is that I have only 20 years left to go. <laughs> Professor Boyle was correct in starting her remarks with a philosophical context. In my own case, it was the philosopher Bertrand Russell who made the remarks that the philosophy of life is a boring subject until you ask the question. But once you do, it becomes a burning desire to find the answers. These remarks were the moment of revelation in my life. Human purpose, human potential, and human consequences should be the core of all human considerations. We live in a country and a world that is responsive to our ideals, to our ideas, and to our efforts. Success in our lives is as much about Canada as its opportunities as it is about ourselves. The enormous respect that Canadians enjoy worldwide is well known, far in excess of our size and population or the wealth of our nation. Creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship are all about problem solving. It is often said that problems create opportunities. Life is about joyfully identifying problems, both large and small, and saying to yourself, how can I make it better? The secret to your own personal success will be through the degree of your participation and your performance. This will depend on three things, competence, focus, and energy. Recently, Thomas Friedman, the entrepreneurial author, stated that many, while many will seek a job, many others will invent their own job. I'm very optimistic about the future you are facing. In addition to all the normal opportunities, both the high-tech revolution and the green revolution present a banquet of added opportunities and challenges. During my lifetime, I have never seen revolutions as great as the current high-tech and green revolutions. Academics, designers, producers, governments, and citizens are all super active trying to find more sustainable solutions. I envy your position in life today. I'm optimistic about the, about the future, and particularly your future. 
I wish each and every one of you success with personal happiness and a purposeful life. And thank you all, and have a wonderful graduation celebration. Thank you.